Hey friend, Irko here with The Recording Revolution. In this video, we're gonna talk about using references to achieve better mixes. Let's go! I promote my mixing online real heavy on all social media and I self-proclaim to have the best mixing memes on the planet. Like this one. This is your song before I mix it. This is your song after my mix. Yummy! This is your song before I mix it. This is your song after my mix. Okay, I promise no more horsing around. But the message here is very clear. The song needs to sound a lot better after it's mixed than it was before. However, that's not enough. Check this one out, right? Same colors, same shape. The important thing here is that the soul, the intent of the song needs to stay true to the artist and the producer's vision, right? That's very, very important. So we respected their vision. The song is now better sonically. However, no song lives in the vacuum like I do, I guess, right? The mix needs to be able to work within a playlist or maybe a radio show or a DJ set. Imagine this, right? The song before us sounds like this. And then ours comes in and it sounds like this. A flute? So that's why we need references. Frame of reference. A set criteria or stated values in relation to which measurements or judgments can be made. That's precisely it. We're not copying their mixes or anything like that. We're just taking a look at what works within our genre, within the charts or within a DJ set and see what's their major proportions, for example, or where their low end is compared, the, the deep low end of the kick drum is compared to where their bass is, things like that. So again, we're not copying it, but we're knowing what worked for them, and therefore we can make some decisions to make sure that when our song comes in after theirs, we're rocking. Hey, I'm a plugin now. Okay, let's take a look at this, right? The blue track is a reference, and this is our mix. This is um, a urbanish, very popular kind of song. These uh, plugins are showing us a lot of information that can be very useful. For example, the short term volume, the long term value, and the frequency response. This area here shows the low end of the reference, which is quite literally through the charts. Yeah, it's very loud. Well, take a look at my mix right here. It's practically identical. That's, that's a good thing. In our DJ set thing that I was talking about, that helps a lot because, uh, you know, when our song hits, it'll have the same low end punch information and rumble or, you know, trunk rattle kind of situation that we want. A little bit of an anomaly that our reference has is this range here, the uh, 4,000-ish. That's where their snare hits. You know, don't think that all songs in the urban genre have that. But again, this is giving us a good reference. By the way, I'm not saying to use these specific plugins and mix for the numbers shown on screen. That's not what we're doing. But I want to convey to you that comparing things helps a lot in your quest for a better mix. Let's go to a different genre. This record is more of an alternative kind of thing. So immediately you can tell that the super deep low end here is not as loud as the track before. Again, different genres, different aesthetics. We need to know these things. So if you listen to this record on headphones, the big ones that have low end, you will see that the song's frequency response ends at around, uh, you know, 60, 50, 60. <laughs> now these readings are telling me that they are louder, but have less low end. We're a little quieter, but we have more low end. So. Again, this is a choice and I'm making it after being informed by this. This song is a band. I can already tell by the looks that the reference is a lot quieter than my mix. We're looking at minus 14, whatever, something like that. We also have more irregularities in the frequency response. There's a couple of spikes here in the mid range. So I guess my frequency response uh, looking a little better. <laughs> And we're also substantially louder, like double the energy here. Look at that, minus five, oh my God. 
So we talked about using small, medium and large speakers, if possible, if that's something that you can do at home, amazing. Still though, every time you switch from speaker to speaker, it's highly suggestible, or I guess that's what I am suggesting you to do, is to play 20, 30 seconds of your frame of reference before you go to your mix, so that you can get tuned onto the sound of the speaker itself, and then be able to make informed decisions on what to do next on the mix. Same goes with headphones or earbuds. One thing we didn't talk about when looking at that spectrum analyzer was the width. But maybe somebody should do a video about that. You know what else is cool? Look at what I did. This is a little model that I made to describe to you what I'm doing with the construction of my new studio. And I'm cordially inviting you to check out my series about that because it's very interesting. I'm building a studio from ground up. I hope it's gonna look a little better than this, but to find out, go check it out. This is a little preview. So the reason why we're sitting both rooms on top of those rubber cubes is because as the CGI animation shows you, the control room is gonna be able to float within this building, effectively isolating everything that happens inside to the outside and the other way around. The LUFS. We wanna keep an eye on that and make sure that we print the mix as loud as we can, obviously. But we really don't wanna kill ourselves on, on that that much. Eventually, all of our songs will be loaded onto DSPs and they will control the general volume at which the song is played back. So we shouldn't really worry about that too, too much. We want to pick a reference that's somewhat similar to our song, right? So if our song has live drums, we want to make sure that we get something that's somewhat fitting with that. If our song has 808 bass, we should not probably go and get a, you know, a funky slap bass kind of situation. We need to make sure that we're somewhat in the ballpark of our reference. So now for the big question, is using references cheating? It's like we're trying to make pizza and we want to gauge the store down the block and see at what temperature their pies are or how big their pies are so that we know what they're about and we can play a fair game. We're not copying their ingredients for our pie. We really aren't. We're using our own ingredients. So no, I don't think it's cheating. It's kind of like when you're running a marathon or a track and you need to beat the guy next to you. It doesn't really matter how fast you're going, you just need to beat that guy. So let's find out what the competition is doing, be informed by it, and play a fair game. So no, it's not cheating. References all day. <laughs>